Hello there again, and welcome back to Yosemite Valley Zoo, our wonderful Planet Zoo project here on the channel. And uh, hello and welcome to the hump day. It's again Wednesday, and today we are going to tackle the one thing that you guys all voted for. It's going to be the little recreation area in the corner between the bison habitat and the wonderful domes. Now, um, please stick with me today. It's gonna be very interesting episodes because of various things. So I will give you a lot of uh, info about what is going on in the next upcoming episodes of this project, what else is going on on the channel and, and how things are going to, uh, you know, change in the next couple of days. Uh, because now finally I am back to my normal work rhythm. Uh, I kind of uh, said this already a few times, but now uh, next Monday, starting next Monday, everything will be back to normal except the only thing that I don't have is my uh, football because this is still not allowed in Germany but everything else is back to the very normal uh, with some hygiene kind of measurements but uh, it's not like you know it's, it's okay it's fine that means also a few things will change but I think it's um, it's it's kind of a matter of time uh, until I, I kind of uh, found out how to deal with it exactly but the cool thing is I can tell you that I, I've set a few things into place so that I can uh, still create some good content. Uh, maybe not the amount of stuff I have done recently, but uh, still very much uh, hopefully to your liking. And also um, I have some cool plans uh, for some, some cool content. Now actually I have planned a little series here on uh, Planet Zoo, which will starting next week. Um, it's kind of a little inspiration series. I, I think this will be very cool and I cannot wait to release this to you. Also, there's a new movie Habitat nearly done and I'm still very confused why no one has figured out yet what this is going to be. It's very interesting though um, because I've, I've, I've given you some spoilers but um, all of the ideas that you guys came up with were like not really leading the wrong, right, 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 right way. Um, but yeah, so... Again, this is going to be very interesting. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about while you see that I'm creating a water wheel in the background here. Yes, I know there is a water wheel in the game, but you know me, I need to create my stuff myself. Um, and so we are going to do this. I'm gonna talk a bit more about this build in a few minutes, but first let me, uh, let me just take the few minutes to talk about one thing that is very important to me. Now, um, in the last couple of weeks, many people reached out to me how they can support this channel. Um, for me personally, this is this is something really great. You know, this is my hobby. I, I do this because I love it. Um, and and yes, obviously, um, there is a spare bit of money that is dropping out of it because of the monetization and stuff like that. And these people were asking me what to do and blah blah blah. You know, I don't have. I, well, I have a Patreon, but I don't have a Patreon. I'm I'm about to delete it anyways. I never did anything about this, and I didn't want to. I just I don't know. It it was I created it because at a certain point in time you just create every channel available. <laughs> and you just go with it. But no, I just created it, uh, never use it, and I will never use it. So Patreon is not like a really a thing. But um, if you guys really want to support me, and please keep that in mind, this is absolutely not mandatory whatsoever. It's just if you want and can do it. I do appreciate that because as you know, I, I try to reinvest every single cent into the, into the channel again. Um, the wonderful memberships is a cool option. Now, why do I say this now and why do I drop this randomly in the middle of a video? You may ask yourself and uh, you are totally right to do so. Like, I didn't really want to make an own video on that. I feel like I, I, I don't, you know, I don't see a reason in, in doing so. If you guys want to support me, you do, but there's no need for a video making that. However, there's a little bit of a change going on on YouTube depend, uh, in regards of the money and stuff like that. Now, to not give you real numbers, but um, my past month has been really good in terms of views. It has been amazing. I nearly um, reached my second best month uh, so far on this channel. But let me tell you, the money I got out of it is like the, the views were nearly as good as in the second best month of that, but the money I made with it was more than four times less than the same month which had similar views last year. The reason for that is basically because of the global crisis, um, people are spending less money to do some ads. I mean, I'm working in an advertising agency. I know what's going on. Um, and people are very careful and companies are very careful in spending money at the moment. Um, and that is also obviously working for YouTube as well. Now, why do I even say that? It's that, It doesn't really matter. You know, I've got my job, I earn my money, it's all fine. 
but this also means that some of my plans um, for, for kind of improving my computer and stuff, they don't really work out the way I planned them to work out, um, and so I have to have to wait a little bit until I improve my rig again. However, and this is another point, again, I don't need anything, it's all fine. I mean, it's just like I wanted to let you know because there were so many questions and I hated to answer like, yeah, you know, I've got PayPal if you really want, like, no. It really hurts inside myself. I don't want to do this, okay? But if you want to support me, I think the membership is a great way. The membership um, on YouTube, I don't know if you know how exactly that works, but uh, you can you can buy basically a membership on my channel. You get this little icon in front of your name. I have a special tag uh, and tap on my on my YouTube dashboard. So I see when, when um, members are commenting, I see these uh, comments highlighted. You have this little emoji in front of your name. Um, I can do community posts on the community wall which are um, only for you guys so uh, this is really cool actually in terms of having a little bit of an exclusive content but this is again the other thing I wanted to talk about I I really do believe I um, never want to make my channel any kind of exclusive it's it's here for you I want to make you a better time I want to make it all for you available and accessible so these things I would do for the members are really just some teasers um, and some stuff like that okay so I'm I've I've thought about this a long long time but I, I think I will not give exclusive um, previews to videos for example one of the most important things why I won't do this is mainly that there's still no system in place where I can schedule the video to be live for the members let's say two hours ahead of time this way I would still be able to think about it and do it but I need to have it automized, okay? I don't have the time to do it all by hand and make it that way. It's just not working. It's not my full-time job. I'm not here the whole day. I need to schedule things uh, even days ahead, not even one day or two days ahead, days ahead, like on the weekends and stuff. And since I have no ability to plan things out this way, so let's say, for example, the video goes online at 4 p.m. for the members and at 7 p.m. for the regular persons, which oh, in, its, in its own already sounds so wrong, um, this is kind of... I don't want to do this, so please don't expect crazy perks or crazy tears um, because, again, I really do believe that this has to be a place for everyone and I do grant some perks and stuff. Uh, one of the cool things is that I can create a um, Discord server thread only for the members where only the members can talk to each other. That's kind of cool and I will also bring the Twitch subs in. I'm cu Currently, I'm trying to automate that somehow because looking at the, in the, at the list at all times is just... I don't know, it's just so much work. Um, but I'm looking at some automization. There, there are some cool plugins and APs I can use, so I, I will figure that out. So this is this is one thing I can offer. But again, I do want to make sure that this is only optional. So if you want to support me and you, you like the content, you want that I can keep creating and improving the content, I'm very happy and I would welcome you as my member. That's awesome. But again, this is the best way to do it because then YouTube does have the money from you basically and it sells the money to me or it kind of gives the money to me and I'm, I'm not you know it, it doesn't matter if I have many views it doesn't matter if the CPC is good it doesn't matter if advertisers spend ads on my channel it does not matter um, the money is there and it comes in and it's fine so this is the this is the big advantage of the membership though uh, yeah I just wanted to quickly talk about that as you know I, I try to keep it very open and honest with you and I think kind of saying, you know, I don't make any money, it's, it doesn't matter and stuff, would also be a huge lie. Because honestly, um, this park over here and also Kuali Zoo um, wouldn't be happening without you guys. Because honestly, last year I spent over 3,000 uh, euros on my computer to improve it. Because it was actually aged well. Well, it wasn't aged well. It was aged, but um, not well. So uh, I needed to improve some things. So I got a new CPU, I got a new graphics card, I got a new monitor, I, uh, I got a new cooling system, got a new tower and stuff like that. And, you know, I... I can tell you, I didn't make 3,000 euros total, uh, you know, after taxes last year. I didn't do this. So I invested more money into the channel back than I earned from it. So it would be a lie to say that I don't, you know, use the money. I think it's I think it's very clever to put it into the channel again. Um, actually, the, the, there is a lie. I did buy something for my wife from the money <laughs> as a little present. I think that's fine. I think you all are fine with it. She was very happy about it. So um, <laughs> uh, that was just maybe the only and sole thing I ever did 
um, with the YouTube money and Twitch money that was not put back into the channel. So yeah, just, just giving you this little story because I feel like for those people who are listening to this point in the video, they absolutely deserve it because this will only be a few hundreds that do not skip. So um, yeah, you're welcome guys. I like you a lot. You are the reason why this is also awesome. Okay, now let's talk about the build. Uh, you also deserve some info about the build. Now, this build is a water wheel. Uh, it's not really a mill. It's almost like a little... Um, I imagine that this could be like a storage building that has the water mill to create some energy in this in this area over here um, and some water flow for maybe some gardening or something like that. And this is going to be turned into a wonderful restaurant. You will see the real-time part in the end where I'm going to explain what is going to happen on Saturday. Uh, I do have also an idea what we do with this area uh, for Saturday. If I do do an episode for Saturday though, I'm not sure because it might be the movie Habitat. I have to see. Anyways, uh, this building was inspired by the architecture I could found uh, in some Yosemite Valley images. There were some huts and some stuff. Some There, there was a little um, holiday village with some uh, lovely little uh, cabins and uh, some of them had some cool architectural influences I, I used in this building um, but then again to be completely honest with you I looked to some fairy tale water uh, wheel buildings uh, you can find all over the place in, in some fairy tales uh, because I found this also be very very interesting and I wanted to use this and pair this then with the design style or with the designs uh, of the yeah, Yosemite inspired stuff I found. So I think it worked out pretty well indeed. I, I'm really happy with uh, the colors. I'm really happy with the roof. I wanted to make it really steep. I'm also quite happy with how the, uh, the stone walls and the timber works together. And uh, to be honest also, it's not as piece heavy as it could be um, because this African African lock piece over there. It's just one piece as you've seen uh, a few minutes ago. Um, so that's kind of cool because it saves you a lot of pieces and still looks as if you have put this all together uh, with these single locks, which you definitely didn't do. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, uh, in the end, um, I tried several things here to make it look really finished and stuff, but you can really tell now from uh, this already over here, this, the, the whole building has a really nice appeal already. I really wanted to make this building the star of the show here and not doing too much around it. I wanted to have like a very nice little um, appeal to it. Also making some shutters here uh, in case you want uh, to close these windows off uh, if there's like no one in the, in the zoo or stuff like that. And again, we, we do have to think about it. Uh, this is, originally this would be like a national park or something over here. It's not like created as a zoo. It is a zoo that was made out of a national park or whatever. Um, and so this is why you do have a lot of these buildings that were basically here for some tourists or for some hiking people. Uh, and uh, therefore it's it's a little bit different. It's not as theme park-ish, as zoo-ish, as zoo-ish, whatever it was, um, as it could be. And therefore I wanted to keep it fairly natural and having some cool stuff in here. I may imagine that there are also potentially even some rooms in this building to have a sleepover and, uh, you know, just spend your night here in this uh, zoo or park. And even maybe in the winter times or whenever the zoo has closed, maybe you can still go here for a hike or this is kind of the... Um, the point where you start your hike up into the mountains, this could also be uh, one of the things why you have this one. So yeah, I think this is kind of the idea. Uh, it has a bit of a water feature to the right hand side of the building, as you can see right now, which we're going to connect. I will do, uh, I will have to talk about this in the real time part though. There was a bit of confusion going on in the live stream. And um, I wanted to talk about this confusion a little bit later on in the real time part, because that's where I can explain this the best. Now, moving on with the series in the next couple of weeks, uh, we will fulfill what you guys have voted for. So I think the next um, ne the next best voting uh, result after the recreation area over here is the Grizzly reintroduction program. And I cannot wait to do this. And I'm also hoping that, I don't know when, but in not maybe not that far future, we will get info if, if there is a new... Uh, Planet Zoo update coming or DLC coming soon, I don't know, but you know, kind of carrying on with the normal rhythm that uh, Frontier is always doing, like four DLCs a year. Um, it might be summertime, so June, July, and you know, th this means that in the middle of June, something like that around there, it uh, could already be an announcement for early July, who knows, but this is like the normal schedule that you would expect. and. Yeah, I'm super much looking forward. And again, I think 
one thing that I'm really happy with is how the overall situation with my sky gardens and stuff uh, played out and with the domes. I'm really, I'm really sure that I will do pretty much the same for the next DLC and update again, that I will plan ahead and try to make sure that we are finished with a certain area in here and then start off with a dedicated DLC area. Um, that makes sense. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just very much looking forward to that, uh, how this will turn out. But I'm quite confident that we will see something in the future as well. As far as I heard, um, the crisis hasn't uh, affected the overall planning of Frontier that much. Like, there's just a little bit about Elite Dangerous, I guess. But I think it wasn't really down to the crisis. I think it was uh, down to some development uh, uh, actions and stuff. Uh, so not sure about this. But anyhow, so yeah. Now the rest of uh, the time left is now all about the foliage work and stuff. It really gives the um, context to the area. I'm always amazed by how much you can change the um, the face and the character of an area by slapping down some foliage and rocks in minutes. Like, you can tell from the whole time-lapse. The time-lapse is now, let's say, 80% done, and the building itself was, like, focused the whole time. But now, bringing in the foliage only takes 20% of the time, but it kind of creates over 50% of the context and character of this area, which is insane. Uh, I really do love it, um, and I really want to keep this area as nat natural as possible. Also quite lush, to be honest. You will see in the end that I'm adding quite a few trees here and there, trying to hide a few things and stuff, yeah. But th there's only one little downside I'm going to show you in the real-time part, is the backside of the building with the water wheel. Unfortunately, seems to be a bit too much into the dark because of the how the light hits this ho whole valley here. So I might consider putting in a second wheel in here. Not really sure how I do it because I like the wheel so much that I want to give it a bit of a proper viewing. Um, but yeah, I have to see. Maybe you guys can come up with an idea in the comments as well. That would be awesome. Because I'm not... I'm not really sure like how this looks from the other side of the of the river. I will show you in the real-time part. It's a bit weird. It's a bit... I don't know. It could look better though if there's more sunlight hitting that area, which it unfortunately doesn't. But yeah, you will you will see that. But yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. I will leave you alone now with the last couple of seconds of uh, the time lapse, and then uh, I'll be talking to you again in the real time part, which is in about a minute. So enjoy the last couple of seconds. So there we go, we are here in the real time part. As I said, um, right from the get-go you can see what I meant with the shadow. So it's kind of cool looking, honestly, with the uh, sun from, from the above, but yeah, it's, I don't know, it's weirdly in the shadows. And if I turn around, you can see the building gets so much character from the other side once the sun is like in direct light. And uh, yeah, you cannot really change too much about it. Let, let me just show you how the sun, it's like really rotating that way. So the most I can do is basically that one over here. Now let's just rotate around. So you can see there's a little bit of light falling in here. It's not too much though. It's just very subtle. It's okay, you know, it could be worse, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just not a big fan of it. The problem though is I, I can't really... I don't know how to, to explain, but you know, where should I put it, you know? If I put it here, like there's no water. If I put it in here, what kind of sense would it make? Because like there's no stream going on, there's no water flow. So that makes no sense at all. And uh, down here even even less. Now this is this is really, really weird, okay? 
I think I'm going to leave it here just like this, but I don't know. This is uh, the overall sun situation in here is uh, rather complicated. I was also looking into maybe changing changing uh, the, you know, uh, the mountain a little bit because the sun now is here. You can see the mountain is what is blocking it because over here you can see there is a bit more. But honestly, the only situation where you would have the sun is like that. Okay, so this is where it is. And like the sun would be here and then it would be falling on it. But you can see how much further in the back I would need go need to go um, because look at how much shade the mountain creates. Like that's the angle over here. So to in order to get some light here, I would definitely like chop away like half of this mountain. And I think it's not really worth it. I definitely think it's not really worth it. So we're going to keep it that way. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is because we had such a huge discussion going on in this stream is how that water thing would work. Now, a water wheel usually works that way that the river flow pushes the water wheel forward and makes it rotate, okay? The energy created from the rotation then starts to pick up the water down here. So this is why you do have these shovels in here where the water can go in and then the water would be kind of uh, pushed upwards and then at a certain point the water uh, reaches a level so let's say for example on that height where the water would originally go down here and then you have to have some kind of carrying device what could bring the water back or you have this whole thing like completely um, completely shut down like with the in-game water wheel is the same version and then it rotates all the way down and then you have the water flow that goes back into this direction because then it's kind of put into yeah some kind of water uh, water system like this however my idea over here is also a wheel design that it does give uh, does exist um, the problem is there is to be some moving parts now originally what would happen is the water would be carried into these shovels over here and at a certain height and this would actually be this height over here I needed to put this a tiny bit higher so it's not 100% realistic but at this height over here that piece in the front I'm gonna show you quickly this piece over here would then flap it down. Like what it would do, it's kind of making this one. It flaps down and the water then goes down into this little pipe system. This is what happens and this is the design. So in case anyone was, uh, you know, wondering what this design is about, this is how I imagined it to work. So it's rotating the left hand side. After a certain speed, it starts to catch the water and then it's rolled into this pipe work, which then goes into this area over here. I'm, I'm still, I will do put some uh, VFX in here, so don't worry about that though. And in here I imagine that this has been maybe some kind of cleaning uh, area where you have some, you know, you could uh, put some stones and clean them and see if you find some metals or stuff like that in. But it has been, it hasn't been used for a while, so it's kind of a little bit of a uh, nice water storage over here. I imagine this could only be here now for some other things, if in case you need some water for the plants or stuff like that, or for the dome. It could be like a water system for the dome as well, who knows. Um, like a desalination going on in the back here. But yeah, since the water is not that much floating over here anymore, there is some moss created, some, um, you know, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we still need to make some water tumbling down here. I imagine to make some pipes going down. And then we have a very, very nice little, uh, you know, stream down here. It's just here for the effect, you know, it's very shallow. It's very shallow though. There's not much water in. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks. Now, yeah, that's in it for today, guys. I am really looking forward to the next episode where I'm finishing up this area. We will have some nice um, pergolas going on here where the people can sit down. I will put some more shops down. I will put some education down. And I will also make some cool design with this plaza and some huts over here. And then I imagine to put some flamingos in this area. I think this would be cool to make this entire area a huge flamingo habitat. I think that could be maybe a cool thing. Or do you have another idea what we could do with this area? Let me know in the comments down below. But that's it for today. And also, make sure to check out my Paralives video because I really think this game can be absolutely cool. So make sure to jump over. I'm gonna uh, put the link to it to the top right now. And also, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I really hope that you guys um, have a wonderful week. And maybe for the German ones, you have a wonderful day off tomorrow because it's bank holidays in Germany. So for the German friends, and I think in the Netherlands too, um, have a wonderful day. I see you in the next one. Until then, have a good time and goodbye, everyone.